Hey guys, today we are going to look at different transformations of quadratics with these Desmos sliders. We're going to answer the question, how do I identify the different transformations that happen to quadratic functions? So let's start with when we take our parent function f of x equals x squared and we add something to the outside of it. Let's actually look at the parent function first. This is what we're gonna be transforming. So it has a vertex at zero, zero. Our axis of symmetry is going through that at x equals zero, and our range is y is greater than or equal to zero. So let's turn on the slider for adding something outside of the parentheses and look at what happens. So it kind of looks like the parabola is getting smaller, but it's just getting cut off. It is actually moving up whenever we have a positive number. And then when I have a negative number, I am going down. That vertex is just moving. So when we add outside the parentheses, that is a vertical translation or shift, we're moving the vertex. If we add, then the vertex or parabola will shift up that many units. And if we subtract, the vertex or parabola will shift down that many units. So this is going to change the range. It's still going to be y is greater than or equal to, but that minimum or maximum or that minimum value is changing. So that's going to change the range. Okay, so that is adding outside the parentheses. Let's look at adding or subtracting inside the parentheses, what happens there. So if I add, it looks like that parabola is just shifting to the left. And if I change it to a negative number and I'm subtracting, it shifts to the right. So that is a horizontal translation or shift. It is moving that vertex again. If we add inside the parentheses, like this, that was shifting to the left. And when we subtract inside the parentheses like that, it was shifting to the right. So our range doesn't change. The range still remains y is greater than or equal to zero, but it does change our axis of symmetry. So anytime we add or subtract, it is a translation. Okay, let's look at multiplication. Let's look at multiplication outside the parentheses first. So this is gonna be a vertical dilation, and when I multiply by a number bigger than one, you can see I get skinnier, and when I multiply by a number less than one, you can see that I get wider. So this is our vertical stretch or compression. Whenever I am multiplying by something bigger than one, I am vertically stretching it like this. I'm pulling it vertically, and that's what's making it skinnier. And then if the number I'm multiplying by is less than one, it's a small number like 0.6, that is getting wider. And the way I do that is by vertically compressing it, pressing on it up and down. That's what makes it wider. Okay, let's look at what happens if I multiply by a number inside the parentheses. So if I multiply by a number bigger than one, I'm still getting skinnier like I was when it was outside the parentheses. And if I am multiplying by a number less than one, I'm still getting wider like I was outside the parentheses. So this is a horizontal stretch or compression. If I'm multiplying by a number bigger than one, I got skinnier. And the way we horizontally doing that is by horizontally compressing it, pushing in the sides. And then if I'm multiplying by a number less than one, I'm getting wider. And the way we do that is by horizontally stretching it pulling on the sides. All right, then the last transformation we need to look at is if we just have a negative and that is going to flip the parabola. It is a reflection over the x-axis because it's flipped over the x-axis. And our range changes from y is greater than or equal to the minimum value to y is less than or equal to the maximum value. All right, let's look at number one. I am going to look at these transformations and identify them based on the function notation, and then I'm gonna graph in Desmos to verify that I'm correct. So I only have addition and subtraction, so that means I only have translations or shifts going on. Inside the parentheses, minus two means that I am gonna go right two. And then this plus seven outside the parentheses is going to be our vertical 
transformation, and that means that I'm gonna go up seven. So I have the parent function f of x equals x squared graphed in there already. Now I'm gonna graph this transformed parabola and make sure that I was correct. So there I can see it going right to, from the red to the blue, and then the plus seven should make it go up seven, which it looks like it did. So our vertex changed from zero, zero to two, seven. Okay, let's look at this next one. So I have two things going on. I have this negative sign, which means that my parabola is going to flip or reflect over the X axis. Then I am multiplying by a number bigger than one. I'm multiplying by three. Whenever I multiply by a number bigger than one, whether it's inside or outside, that's gonna make the parabola skinnier. If you want to get technical, that is going to be a vertical stretch. That is what makes it skinnier by a factor of three. So I should see this whenever I graph negative three f of x. And there is the parabola. It flipped over the x-axis from the red to the green and you can tell it got skinnier as well. Okay, now we need to write the function notation for a parabola that has the following transformations. So translation down six means outside the parentheses, I'm going to subtract six and then left five means inside the parentheses, I'm going to add five to the X and then a reflection over the X axis means that I am just going to stick a negative outside of the F of X. So let's put all these together. The reflection will come first, negative F, and then there were some changes inside the parentheses. We're gonna do the X plus five for the left five and then the down six will be minus six outside the parentheses. And then I can graph this just to verify that all those transformations happen correctly. So negative f of x, so I can see that it's gonna flip, and then the plus five should make it move to the left five, and then I'm gonna close that and subtract six, and that should make it move down six, and I can't even see where it went, there it is. So the vertex should reflect that. It does, there's the left five and down six. Okay, now we want to write the function notation for a parabola that has transformations to the quadratic parent function. So write 10 means inside the parentheses, I'm going to subtract from the X 10, and then a vertical compression by one half means in front of the F of X, I'm going to multiply it by one half. So let's put those together now. The vertical compression will happen first. It'll be one half outside and then F of X plus 10. Let's verify in Desmos that I did that correctly. One half times F of X plus 10. So I saw it get wider and then I moved Oh, I accidentally put plus 10, but it's supposed to be a minus 10, like I had up here. Translation right means minus. There we go, now it moved the correct direction. So that's why it's good to use Desmos to double check. You might accidentally get a sign wrong like I did. Okay, number five says write the function notation that shows the transformation from f of x to p of x. So let's talk about what happened first. Here's my parent function f of x. It doesn't look like I got any wider or skinnier or flipped, so I didn't multiply by anything, but I did shift. It looks like I did a horizontal shift and my vertex shifted to the right, one, two, three. So I went right, three. So that means inside the parentheses, I'm going to subtract three. So from f of x to p of x. The new p of x, the way I got it was by taking that original function and subtracting three from the x to move it right three. 
Okay, let's look at number six. The graph of f of x equals x squared is shown on the grid and they want us to graph f of x minus four and describe the transformation. Well, it's outside the parentheses and I'm subtracting. I know subtracting is a translation and since it's outside the parentheses, I am moving down four. So we are going to pick some points from this parabola and just move them down four. So here's a point and I'm gonna move it down one, two, three, four, right there. My vertex was at zero, zero. I'm gonna move it down four to zero, negative four. And then this point, I'm gonna move it down one, two, three, four. And then maybe there's a couple of other points. I can move this one down one, two, three, four as well. And this one down one, two, three, four. And there is the new transformed parabola that I shifted down for.